Growth in Grace Evidences of the Growth in Grace Joyfulness under crosses and disappointments and severe pain A growing jealousy for the honor of God, for the purity and the honor of His church A growing deadness to the flattery or censure of men Losing more and more consciousness of self Less temptation to resentment an increasing deadness to all world all the world has to offer being less and less disposed to speak severely or to judge uncharitably of others less temptation to remember an injury a growing tranquility under sudden and crushing disasters Remember that every step of progress must be made by faith and not by works. If you would grow in grace, you must do it through faith. You must pray in faith for the Holy Spirit. You must appropriate and put on Christ through the Holy Spirit at every forward step in your progress. You must have a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit through faith. Remarks Finney The theological seminaries need to pay vastly more attention to growth and grace of their students. They need a professor of experimental religion who has experienced the and power enough to press them along into those higher regions of Christian experience, which are essential to their being able to lead the church on to victory. It is amazing to see how little effort is made to cultivate the heart of young men studying for the ministry. We must have a change in this respect. A, a much higher standard of Christian experience must be required as a condition of ordination. Is it any wonder that the Church of God is so feeble and inefficient, while the leaders and teachers are, are many of them, mere children in spiritual knowledge, while a ripe Christian experience is made no part of indispensable education of a minister? Why, this is infinitely more dangerous and ridiculous than to entrust men to lead an army in the field while they merely understand mathematics and never have had any training or experience in military matters. In this respect, too, there must be a great change. Churches should refuse to ordain and receive pastors unless they are fully satisfied of their having made much progress in Christian experience so as to be able to lead on and keep the church awake. Christian, you are now without excuse. You are now know, you now know the key to revival. You have just read the words of Charles G. Finney, one of God's greatest revivalists who, a century ago, under the power of God, led approximately 2,500,000 souls to Christ. Conditions were the same then as they are now. Pour over this booklet, talk about it, pass it on to others. Revival is in the wind. God's Spirit is about to be poured out upon the earth. There is the sound of the abundance of rain. Jesus commands us to be zealous and repent. Fill your lamps with oil. Our King is coming. The fields are white unto harvest. The night is almost upon us, and you are holding the, and you are holding back the great revival. This is the hour for Christ's overcomers to move. Repent, pray, and watch the mighty hand of God sweep. Our land. This is the last call.